Hey guys, Casey Scanlon here. Gonna give you a quick fishing report for Lake of the Ozarks. It's almost Christmas now, uh, weekend before Christmas, and uh, you know, the fish are biting. We're starting to get uh, some cold weather here. The wind's blowing outside. It's a cold, nasty morning. So probably wouldn't be a fun day to be out on the lake, but the fish are starting to chew. The water temperature is still uh, almost 50 degrees. It's starting to get into the lower 40s. And um, you know, the, it really has the fish putting on the feed for the winter. They're uh, trying to get big, fat, and healthy, so they don't have to feed as much during these uh, colder water periods. So water temp's gonna be dropping this week. We've got some, some cold weather coming through. So that should bunch the fish up and, and make them bite even more. So went out a couple times this week and fishing was awesome. So I'll kind of run through what we're doing right now. And a lot of these baits and techniques will continue to work. Uh, as the water gets colder. But look, these fish are still spread out. I mean, water temps close to 50 degrees. They're biting crankbaits, spinnerbaits, jerkbaits, um, the whole nine yards. So you uh, caught some on a jig, single swim bait. So it's all kind of working. Crappie bite is phenomenal. Uh, if you can shoot a jig, a crappie jig underneath the boat dock, uh, man, you're in to have a good time. Uh, a lot of those big schools of fish are kind of tucked back underneath those docks. So shooting the jig underneath there uh, makes it easier and faster to catch them. But you can catch them all sorts of ways. The crappies are suspended over open water. They're in brush piles uh, and they're on the feed too. They're doing the same thing that these bass are doing. They're roaming around, feeding heavily, preparing for the spawn uh, next spring. So uh, easy to catch. Um, you know, usually when I'm out there bass fishing, I, this time of year, I take my crappie poles because it's, uh, it's fun and you know, you can fill the freezer and I love eating those little guys. So, uh, let's talk about the bass fishing a little bit. Um, we'll start out with something we talk about in probably every single report. And that is the trophy bass company pro jig. I've got this one trimmed down. This is a three eighths ounce. So a little bit smaller profile. You know, as it gets colder, I like to, you know, downsize the jig just a little bit, especially if I'm fishing shallow around boat docks. And there's a lot of fish uh, hanging out shallow around docks. You know, a lot of fish up shallow feeding. Uh, you see the shad on the shoreline, you know, getting eaten by white bass and largemouth occasionally throughout the day. So they're still up there. You know, buzzbait was working last week. Uh, I bet you could go out there and throw a spook in a variety of top waters and catch some fish still, uh, even at 48, 50 degrees. So, uh, but the jig, uh, fish that around the corners of boat docks, uh, behind the docks is usually better this time of year, uh, especially for that smaller profile jig. That's a light jig. It's going to fall pretty slow. I got it on 20 pound, uh, Bass Pro Shops fluorocarbon. So that's going to make it fall even slower. You know, you can get... Uh, in these winter months, the fish don't fight as hard. They're sometimes not as in as heavy a cover. So I'll, I'll use, drop down to 12 or 15 pound line. Sometimes helps get, some, get a few more bites, makes that jig look a little bit more natural. But I'll do that on some of my smaller jigs. But three eighths, half ounce, uh, even a three quarter. There's still some fish deep on the bottom. These fish kind of change their position every day. So Garmin Live Scope is absolutely crucial to uh, being able to keep up with these fish's movements uh, quickly. You know, you can quickly look at your screen and kind of tell the behavior of those fish after a while or, or where they're positioned at throughout the day in the water column, whether it's two or three feet below the surface or hugging the bottom in 20. You know, you can make those adjustments just by reading your electronics. So, uh, so the jig size is gonna vary based on what I'm fishing, but most days, half, a, half ounce, Three eighths ounce, fish it behind the boat docks, fish it on channel banks, fish it around brush piles, um, and you're gonna get bit. Um, fish are spread out, so they're not grouped up anywhere, but these, you know, these channel banks back in the creeks are prime targets for the boat dock, or for the uh, jig, as well as boat docks, uh, behind the boat docks closer to the shore this time of year is one of my favorite things to do. Now this bike, Man, I caught a big one on it the other day, and it's been really fun. I think this is how a lot of the tournaments are being won. It's not fast and furious most days, but man, you put that Ozark Flash or this CS2, uh, this is the mouse color. I've been having a lot of success with that. Of course, I got my Hayabusa trailer hook on there. Actually, a couple of the big fish I caught this week were on the trailer hook. Um, that Hayabusa trailer hook's awesome. It's got an NRB coating on it. 
which makes it really slick and sharp. It makes it penetrate the fish's mouth, that NRB coating. Um, and also, I really like how it stays in position like this. Okay, you just got, it comes with these two, um, it comes with a bunch of just these plastic little balls. You slide them up on your hook and it helps keep that trailer hook in position. You know, that way if you throw a trailer or, you know, you're casting it around and this thing, you know, goes off to the side or whatever, you, you, you prevent that. Um, you prevent it from swinging around and the fish having a chance to miss it. So, uh, good little trayler hook. Check that out. Check out all the hooks from Hayabusa. They're the, honestly, the sharpest hooks I've ever used. I'm in the business of catching bass and weighing them in at tournaments. And if you don't put them in the boat, you don't weigh them in and you don't make any money. So I try to use the best hooks I can. And I've been using the Hayabusa hooks for a long time and they're honestly the best. The treble hooks, uh, flipping hooks, all of them. They've, they've thought it all out and uh, they're super sharp, very reliable and um, couldn't do it without them. So check out those Hayabusa trebles. They should have them at a lot of your local retailers like, like Fitz uh, Fishing, I believe has them up the street. Um, okay, this one caught a couple big ones for me this week. And one of my favorite uh, jerk baits, uh, period especially when it's cold and you're getting a lot of bites like we are right now we're throwing the jerk bait around and a lot of days we're catching a lot of numbers you know it's not always the case but when they're biting you know we're catching a lot of those 13 14 15 16 inch fish and uh, you know if you want to get that bigger bite that four five six pound bite alabama rig is a good way to do it but also in a lot of these tournaments you can't throw a alabama rig around here and Honestly, I don't like throwing it anyway, but this jerk bait right here gets big bites. It's the Tackle HD Magnum Fiddlesticks. So this is bigger. I got another jerk bait here. I had three or four tied on. You can see the size difference. I'm not holding it very well, but, and I got it in my hook hand now, but you can see that size difference. It's a big jerk bait. It throws good. So right now we've got super windy conditions out there. If you were throwing around boat docks or just trying to make pinpoint accurate casts, um, this Tackle HD bait is perfect for that. Great on windy days, great on throwing against the wind. It's a good jerk bait, you can feel it. Um, this Pro Blue color was one I tied on at the end of the day and they were absolutely chewing this thing. Um, the Table Rock Shad is probably my favorite. I've uh, been catching some big ones on that one always, but. It's a great jerk bait. It spins, suspends really good in the water column. You can throw big hooks on it. Those are number four Hayabusa uh, treble hooks. So you're gonna catch more fish on it. And you honestly you need number fours on that big bait like that. It's a little bit heavier, so it's easier for them to throw. Um, and you can honestly, I've got it on 12 pound line. I've got a Hamar reel, which has a proprietary braking system on it. It's my favorite flipping, skipping reel, but also great for throwing these jerk baits and things like that, where sometimes you got a little bit of uh, uh, overrun, I guess you would say on your line. You know, some of these baits are hard to cast in the wind, they're real light, um, they're long. So uh, the weight transfer system in these helps cast them, but you know, on these windy days, you can get a backlash. So having that Hamar reel with the braking system is really nice. This reel just throws good and, and uh, it throws further than any other reel on the market that I've ever used. And that's just uh, hands down, uh, that thing just outcasts every other reel that, <laughs> that I've used or been in the boat around, you know? And when I'm in, in the boat with a friend or something and they throw out there, this thing constantly out throws them, uh, no matter what it is, the Hamar or, or the Wraith, uh, both of those. So, so check out those six gill reels, they're awesome. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive. They got really good deals on them. Got two for one specials a lot of time. But um, back to the jerk bait. Uh, 12 pound line, I got this on. I got 10 pound on my, my standard size jerk baits. Um, TBL 930 treble hooks. And I'm using a pretty fast retrieve on it most days. Uh, I let the fish tell me what to do. There's been some days where they definitely wanted this bait on the pause. You know, you let it sit there and they'll actually commit to it. Um, seeing a lot of the fish on my live scope, a lot of them don't commit to the bait. They run up on it super hard. They look like they're gonna eat it and then they shy away from it. So I'll make multiple casts. 
Uh, I'll switch colors. That's kind of why I got this color on. I've got three, honestly, three or four different jerk baits tied on, and I'll rotate through them. And sometimes they prefer a certain color on certain days. But check out that Magnum jerk bait. Awesome bait, and it does for sure get bigger bites. It'll catch smaller fish as well, but it gets it gets bigger bites on average than the traditional sized jerk bait. Um, the traditional sized jerk bait. Uh, this one's a mega bass here. Didn't have a whole lot of success on that color. It looks natural, tried it. Um, the fiddle sticks has been working. The mega bass has been working. Whatever jerk bait you like, um, just kind of experiment with colors. Um, some days they eat one and then other days they eat another. So just kind of, you know, try to judge the reaction of those fish. Live scope definitely helps. I know I keep saying that, but it just cuts down on your time on figuring out what these fish are doing day to day. Uh, ten, I got 10 pound line on that one and Hemdall um, jerk bait rod from Six Gill. This is an awesome jerk bait rod. It's my favorite one. Uh, got a real fast tip, but also a real moderate bend. So you keep those fish hooked. It's got a great flex to it. Comes in uh, several different sizes. I believe a 6.9, this is a 6.6. Six, six. I like a shorter jerk bait rod. Got a good sized handle where it's not in the way, um, you know, not too long. So uh, I like the 6.6 six medium. A lot of guys like a 6.9 or 7 footer, uh, but they got it. Medium, medium heavy, um, they got it. So uh, jerk bait, great on points, secondary points, wherever you're seeing bait. Uh, hang it over the top of brush piles. Again, those channel banks, water's low, so these fish got to go somewhere and uh, they're going to drop off onto the, some of these deeper banks here, especially as the water starts to get colder. But look for bank transitions. Really shad is key. Birds, uh, birds on the bank, uh, shad on your electronics. Um, these fish with this warmer water, they're moving every day. So I'll go and catch them on the jerk bait really, really good. Go back to that same spot and expect to catch them. And guess what? They're not there because the bait's not there. So I'll have to move. Sometimes that's uh, a big move, you know, leaving that entire creek, the cove, that area, and finding the shad again. Sometimes it's just a short move, but keep on looking around in order to stay on top of these fish. That's just really, really important this year. Pay it uh, this time of year. Pay attention to where the wind's blowing. Try to chase the wind a little bit uh, if you can. Um, sometimes that really helps, you know, put you around the fish, but just stay on your toes, look at your electronics and uh, hang in there and you're gonna run into them. Uh, another bite that honestly should just get better. You know, when, when we get some of these lower uh, water temps, uh, this crankhead bite is gonna get really good. This is the Tackle HD crankhead, just dives eight to 12 foot, I'll say. Um, crawdad color crankbaits are the best for me this time of year. I got 12 pound Bass Pro Shops fluorocarbon, six three to one gear ratio on this Wraith uh, from Six Gill. I like the six three to one, just kind of keeps you, keeps that bait slowed down, helps you crawl it around the cover and uh, really helps you just focus on what your bait's doing and feel it running across the bottom. Um, but yeah, this is a great crankbait. Uh, wiggle wart, uh, shad wraps, uh, various flat sided crankbaits are all really good options this time of year. Those are all traditionally really good cold water crankbaits. Um, I like the flat sided baits a lot when they get finicky. This crankhead catches them all the way down to 37, 38 degree water temp. I know that sounds super cold, but I was catching on it last spring in 38, 39 degree water. Uh, much better than when the water temp actually rose into the 40s. And so right now, uh, caught a few really nice fish on this. This bite just kind of comes and goes. When they get closer to the bank, man, it's dynamite. Uh, catch a lot of fish on it. When they're kind of suspended, backed up a little bit, don't catch as many, but um, look for rocky banks, look for wind, look for points. Uh, I like a little bit of chunk, a little bit bigger rock, but I mean, you can grind this on gravel, uh, parallel bluffs, you know, get off of those 45 degree banks or creek channel banks and just kind of root this thing around in the bottom and you're gonna catch some fish. I've got uh, number five TVL 930s from Hayabusa. Always change the treble hooks uh, out on, on all my baits. You know, I'll, I'll pull them out out of the package if I'm just practicing and I'll use them with the stock hooks. But once it becomes time to put those fish in the boat, tournament time, uh, I'm changing those hooks out. You know, if I wanna 
uh, put them all in the boat. That's just really, really important. And I'll change them out several times throughout the day. Uh, but that, that bite, I think, as we get into the mid to lower 40s, is going to really, really pick up strong. That's always a great traditional bite down here that catches a lot of fish. Um, then the Alabama rig. Alabama rig's been working everywhere. Basically chasing fish on my live scope with it, uh, chasing fish that are hanging around some kind of cover. Um, you know, a lot of them are close to the bottom and you just kind of draw them up off the bottom with that bait, but uh, points, brush piles, uh, just going down the bank looking for fish, uh, throwing it around shad, fish that are actually in shad balls, you know, just cover some water with that Alabama rig. I've got the HD swimmers on the back, just like this one right here. Unique little swim bait, got a great profile to it and a really, really good action. So these fish see a lot of the same swim baits out there. So I like to throw something a little bit different and this one definitely produces results. It's been around for a while and uh, kind of has that fatter shad profile body and a real good rolling action to it. it kind of a side to side roll as well as that tail wagon. Um, fish really can't resist it. So I like the three and a half inch uh, on the Alabama rig. And I like this four inch when I'm just uh, swimming it single. Uh, so I got that on a quarter ounce head, throwing it at some of these fish that I'm seeing uh, out there on, in the water column. But uh, fishing's good. Uh, crappie fishing's what I would consider excellent. Bass fishing's good. It's up, I mean, you gotta chase them down. You know, they're not staying put. They're on the move, feeding up but fishing's good. If you put some of those baits in your hand um, you're, and cover some ground, look at your electronics. I've uh, been focusing on my garments, trying to find the bait, trying to find the fish, and uh, you know, eventually you'll run into them. So uh, good luck out there. Uh, I'll drop a link below to all my sponsors, all these products that I've been talking about. And uh, if you guys are wanting a guide trip, I've got a lot of uh, availability. We start a little bit later this year, um, fishing the Bassmaster Opens this year, and we start a little later than normal. We're starting in March. So I'm gonna be around the house uh, doing some guiding, doing a lot of fishing here at Lake of the Ozarks, hopping in a few of these local derbies, and uh, doing a lot more of these fishing reports for you. So stay tuned for the next one. Hope everybody has a Merry Christmas, and uh, good luck out there. We'll talk to you next time.